Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I will be sharing on one of the very common meeting role in a Toastmasters meeting or event, which is timer. Well, timer may sound like a very easy role, but today let me share with you more tips on how you can elevate yourself to become a professional timer. Let's get started. First, this is the role of a timer, which I derived from the Toastmasters website. This role is said to improve your time management skills. But for me, I think one of the most important skills that we will learn is to learn how to focus in a meeting because you need to pay attention to each speaker and time them while showing them those different colored backgrounds. So timer is responsible to monitor the time for each meeting segment and each speaker. Here, these are some of the common roles. First, ac acquire the timing or signaling equipment from the surgeon at arms of your club and know how to operate it. This is in the case of a physical meeting. And then when called upon by the Toastmaster of the day or your MC, explain the timing roles and demonstrate the signal device. Throughout the meeting, listen carefully to each participant and signal them accordingly. When called to report at the end during the evaluation session, announce the speakers or role players' names and the time they have taken. After the meeting, make sure that you return the device to the surgeon at arms and to be kept properly in the club's assets. So to me, timer is very important. It may be very easy because most of the time when a new member join the club, they are asked to play a timer role. So you may think it's very easy, but I would say it requires a lot of focus attention. You need to stay focused throughout the meeting from the beginning until the end where you deliver your report. So ensure that you won't be distracted when you are attending the meeting, especially in an online setting to make sure you can perform your role the best. Let me show you some of the timing indication for the main segments in a Toastmasters meeting. First, in the table topic session or the impromptu speaking session, one minute we will show green, one and a half minute yellow, two minutes red, where they need to start to wrap up and two and a half minutes is times up, which means in a contest setting or even in the club setting, two and a half minutes, more than two and a half minutes, it's considered disqualified, all right? So if the speaker speaks and uses two minutes and 25 seconds, they are still considered within the timing. If they speak more than two minutes and 30 seconds, that's over time, okay? So for table topics, speeches, we also encourage the speaker to speak for a minimum of one minute when they see the green light. All right, for project speeches, always refer back to the evaluation form. Most of the pathway speeches are five to seven minutes, but of course there are some speeches, two to three minutes, three to four minutes, 18 to 22 minutes, and some even have different segments where you need to deliver the presentation and then you go on to the Q&A session. So ensure that you as a timer understand how do you signal the timing to all the project speakers so that we do not have any confusion from the speaker say, hey, you did not show me the timing. So that's why I went over time and it dragged the whole meeting. We do not want that to happen. So ensure you communicate well with the Toastmaster of the day or even the speaker themselves on how do you signal the color. For the contest settings, we usually have a minimum timing. If you go less than four minutes, 30 seconds, the, the speaker is considered disqualified because they do not speak within or they do not speak more than the allocated timing and maximum they can only reach seven minutes 30 seconds anything more than that is over time and disqualified last evaluation speech this is for project evaluation speech and also in the evaluation contest as well it's the same two minutes green two and a half yellow three minutes red three and a half minutes is times up so just follow this and you won't go wrong now, let me show you some of the pictures of those timing devices that many of us missed because we have been online for more than one year. 
Here are some of the devices that Toastmasters Clubs uses. The first one, if you can see, it's an automated timing machine. You just need to key in how much time for that particular speech and it will automatically change when the time is up. So timer basically just need to input the time and then they just need to wait for the lights to turn by themselves. See, it really looks like a traffic light. Interesting, right? So for online meeting, these are some of the very common virtual backgrounds that we see. If you are the timer for an online meeting, make sure that you downloaded the timing virtual background before the meeting. Don't do that at the start of the meeting. You, you will get into trouble. So I have saved those images and even a video in the video description. So do check it out and download it if you do not have any of them. The first three pictures is the most common one that they introduced when online meetings started during this pandemic. And the second one is like a traffic light. It has also been recently introduced, I think many months, few months ago, which I think it's also a fresh look for the traffic light. It appears on the left. So the timer themselves, they can actually on their video and it won't block the timing. It also something for you to consider. And I have also created videos for the timing through three different categories, table topics, project speeches, five to seven minutes one, and also the evaluation, which means you just need to click that video in your virtual background folder and the time will change accordingly because I have input the timing. Do check it out as well. Of course, you need to ensure that your Zoom is able to change the virtual background. Check your laptop and device settings. Certain older laptops, they may not be able to do so. So you may need to have some green screen at the back. And so, so that's why always double check your laptop and device settings. Okay. Of course, how do you want to keep track of the timing? You... Last time when I first joined Toastmasters many years back, each club actually have a physical stopwatch. Yeah, but nowadays, I think many of us, we just use our mobile phone, go to the clock icon in your handphone, look for stopwatch. If you do not have your handphone beside you or using the laptop, it'll be also easier if you just Google up stopwatch function and you can immediately use it without relying on your phone. Because sometimes I don't like to use the phone because... When you use the phone, there will be other notifications coming in. You may end up checking your social media or being distracted by some of the messages. So just keep to one device if possible, depending on your preference. Okay, so here, your Zoom virtual background. Make sure you download all the backgrounds before the meeting and add them into your virtual background folder. It's under video settings. Virtual background, you can see that small plus button on the top right, add image or video. Just now I mentioned, I also have created the video for your convenience to try out the video as well. Of course, remember to log into your Zoom account if you want to do it, because many people, they join Zoom meeting without signing up a Zoom account. So that is why every time they, they attend any Zoom meetings, they will lose their background because it is not being signed into their own account. If you sign in into your own account, even though it's a free version, you can save all your previously added virtual background. Okay, that's a note for you to remember. Now, here's a sample of how stopwatch looks like in Google. What's the difference between stopwatch and timer? I think we will get confused as well. Stopwatch is once you click start, it will start from zero seconds. Timer is you need to input how much time you want to time yourself. For example, if it's a five minutes timer, like during your break time, you can use this function. Then once five minutes is up, there is some sound being emitted. Example, ding, 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 something like that to tell you that it has reached the time. It's like, like your alarm, actually. Okay, other tips to ensure great time management skills for a club meeting. First, you may consider to add clearer timing indication in your meeting agenda. This is one of the meeting agenda that I have come across. 
they segregate their time, green, yellow, and red. Easier not only for the role players, but also for the guests who attend the meeting. Okay, and remember to allocate enough buffer time between speeches. Some people, they just add up the minutes for each session. But remember to add in buffer for Toastmaster of the day or evening to speak a few words. Sometimes they will share some introduction of the speakers. Sometimes they will have a wrap up after each speech. So in between each and every session, do have at least one minute of buffer time. Then you can end your meeting on time. Because if not, you may end up penalizing yourself. Why? every time our meeting will go beyond our expected agenda. Whose fault is it? Is it the timer's fault? Is it the Toastmaster of the evening's fault? Or who? So remember, allocate enough buffer time. Try not to put too many things in one meeting. Just try to do your best as normal, okay? Now, the next one is have a sound emitting device or signal for times up. In an online meeting, sometimes we mute ourselves all the time, except the, the person who is speaking. So many timers I came across, they are very shy to cut or to interrupt the speaker when the time is up. Because sometimes the speaker themselves, they don't care. <laughs> or they don't even pin or see the timer when they are so vigorously sharing their speech. That is why they will miss the timer. That is why it's very important for you to make some noise when the time is up. You can either have a bell sound effect that you downloaded from your computer and share only the sound, but that may not be always the case because if the speaker is sharing screen, you may not be able to use the sharing computer sound function in Zoom. So what I could suggest is that Simply unmute yourself and ting, ting, ting with your own sound or even say time's up or you want, you can just have a physical bell beside you and make that ting sound, whatever it is. Just to, you can demonstrate this in the beginning when you introduce your timer role so that all the speakers and evaluators are aware on how you will signal to them. Okay, so remember once again, Accept the contest where we don't have any sound emitting device when time is up, but otherwise in a normal meeting or event, try to make sure you signal them, okay? Next one, another consideration if you want to always be aware of the timing for all the speakers is you can spotlight the timer. Okay, of course, we do not want to only spotlight the timer. The main thing is actually the speaker. So what we do usually is, for example, for project speeches, we will ask the Zoom master to spotlight the speaker. And once the first light is being shown, the green light is being shown, we will also spotlight the timer together, which means we use the add spotlight function. Then two person will appear on the main screen. That is why it's easier to signal and alert the speakers. Okay, so either yourself as a timer, you get a co-host function to spotlight yourself. If not, you can ask the Zoom master's assistance on that. Okay, just work hand in hand together. But of course, remember most important to also remove your spotlight after that. <laughs> right, now in terms of reporting, I think since online meeting has been introduced, we have always want to be creative in terms of reporting. That is where you can use visual aids to present it. Any format will do, either PowerPoint, even Google Slides, even Word format, Excel format, as long as when you present the report, it is visually appealing, organized, clear to see on the screen. Sometimes people use Excel, but then, they did not zoom in. So you will see very small, tiny words shown on the computer. So do remember to zoom in a little if you are using like Word or Microsoft Excel. Otherwise for PowerPoint, it is easier for everyone to see. Okay, this is a sample where the 
timer reports whether the speaker has speak within the allotted time. And they even highlight if the speaker goes over time in this manner. If you do not want to have so many columns, what you can do is that just three main columns, who are the speakers, time allotted how much, and the time taken is how much. If it's over time, then you just highlight in red color. So it's a good reminder for the speakers as well, okay? I have also have that PowerPoint template in the link. So do download it and edit it according to your meetings agenda. Lastly, this is the timer report after each session for your consideration as well. Some clubs, they do this. There are three main sessions in a Toastmasters meeting, table topics, project speeches, as well as evaluation. So at the end of each session, before the voting for the best speakers or evaluators, the Toastmaster of the day or the host will invite the timer to present the reports. So if you want to save time, you can straight away ask the timer to type out the timing for each person in the chat box. Or if not, you can just invite the timer to verbally read out the timing. If there is a overtime, just highlight it and mention it. You may want to consider to disqualify the speakers if they exceed the allocated time and they are not entitled for voting. I also noticed there are some clubs, for example, there are three speakers like what I've shown here. So Ginny is not entitled for voting. So there are two speakers only. Will you proceed with the voting? For me, I will still proceed with the voting, even though there are only two person, it's either you or me who will be the best, best evaluator. Why? Because we do not want to forego the voting session because one person has gone over time. It's not very fair for the other two evaluators. All right. So discuss this among your ex goals and see what works best for you, how you want to encourage and train your speakers in your clubs. Lastly, thank you for watching my video so far. If you have any more timers, best practices that you have implemented in your club, do share with me in the video, video comments below and check out the video description for the links that I've mentioned with you. I have I have saved them in a Google Drive as shown here. There are many versions of the timer background. Do pick the one that you think it's relevant for your club. One of the background, I only have the color, but the other one is with the words green over there. Why? Because when we have visually impaired speakers, it's easier for them to see, oh, that background is a green. Yeah, they can see the word in, instead of looking at the color. So it's good to have that green, the word wording on the background as well. Okay. And last tip for timer. Some people may wonder, how do I want to display my virtual background, but I do not want to see myself in the background because I will block the words. Simply stick a sticker or get something to block your camera. Yeah, just like that. Okay. Thank you, everyone. I'll just end my presentation and sharing today with a quote by Peter Drucker. Time is the scarcest resource and unless it's managed, nothing else can be managed. So time management is very important in a Toastmasters meeting and event. Do take note and be aware of the timing. And I believe all members will be happy to attend your event again. Thank you. Do remember to subscribe to my channel. Goodbye.